you've given me. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the African Street Festival and the Freedom Rides uh, revisited. And of course, we have with us to talk about the African free, uh, the Street Festival, uh, Kwame Leo Lillard, and to uh, talk about the Freedom Rides, uh, Mr. Alan Kaysen, a participant in the uh, Freedom Rides. And of course, uh, Kwame, uh, let us uh, welcome you as well as uh, you, Mr. Alan Kaysen, uh, to the show this morning and to talk about a topic that uh, has been revived in a real sense, uh, Kwame, primarily because of your efforts and the efforts of others uh, dealing with what has happened at Tennessee State University over the uh, last uh, several weeks. Uh, let's uh, uh, start off, uh, Kwame, by having you and uh, later Mr. Kaysen to uh, give us some information relative to your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in terms of getting you involved in uh, the activities that you're involved in now, and then we'll talk about uh, some other aspects of uh, your involvement. Well, in 1961, you know, that was two years after the initial training um, uh, of the students in the Central Committee here in Nashville uh, around the First Baptist Capitol Hill, around Clark Memorial. Uh, there was a cadre of people who were trained in late 59 mm -hmm. in, the, in the ways of Gandhi and resistance. Mm -hmm. And when 60 came, they were prepared to stop the protest. Of course, Greensboro, North Carolina, mm -hmm. hit on February 1st. Those students in Greensboro created the sit-in movement in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. But 13 days later, their much better organized Nashville movement mm -hmm. undertook uh, a successful sit-in movement mm -hmm. that resulted in the first lunch counters in the South okay. being mm -hmm. open to all races. Mm -hmm. So we were much better trained. We had a better support system in terms of adults the legal system here in Nashville mm -hmm. than it did Greensboro. Mm -hmm. But Greensboro was given the credit mm -hmm. February 1st, 1960, mm -hmm. for being the first okay. student protest. Mm -hmm. The difference is that Nashville movement was so well organized that Dr. King came to Nashville mm -hmm. to learn how we were doing this. Okay. So mm -hmm. when the core group was burnt out mm -hmm. in Anderson, Alabama in 61, mm -hmm. that next year, they gave up the Freedom Ride. Mm -hmm. The Nashville movement was so well organized, we just simply said, no, you're not giving it up. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pick it up, pick it up. And we continued and were successful mm -hmm. in making the Kennedy administration mm -hmm. force the Interstate Commerce Commission to enforce the right for everybody mm -hmm. to ride airplanes, mm -hmm. buses, trains, and boats mm -hmm. without any fear of being harmed because mm -hmm. of the race. Yes. So mm -hmm. the Nashville movement was just simply too well organized, do anything but do what it did, mm -hmm. which is continue the, the, the Freedom Ride mm -hmm. and move that into Mm -hmm. voter registration mm -hmm. in the entire, entire South. Very good. And of course, Mr. Kaysen, as a, uh, a participant in the uh, Freedom Rides yourself, why don't you tell us how, what motivated you to become involved? Because I'm, I'm sure that you understood the uh, social and the uh, political situation at the time. What motivated you to become uh, involved in this activity? Motivated was this, that we were not progressing. What the jobs, mm -hmm. our background, only thing we were looking for being a teacher, mm -hmm. if they're not teaching jobs, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, what we're looking at, another thing is zero. Mm -hmm. How many teachers do you have in a, a school? Mm -hmm. But we had to look at things, why do I have to go to the back of the bus? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to go to the alley? Mm -hmm. Do you have to urinate? Mm -hmm. Why do we do these kind of things? Mm -hmm. No. I said, I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. My parents, they, 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 my loving parents, they, they grew up in this kind of situation. Okay. I was not going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. It was a change that we made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said no. In spite of all the danger that you might uh, face, uh, you, you, you decided that uh, you would not go along with that. I would not go along with it. Plus, you have to realize that things happened years ago, back before we were born. Mm -hmm. And for me, in, in, in Christ days, mm -hmm. with people had to stand for themselves. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for we stand for ourselves, mm -hmm. even though we might die. Mm -hmm. But yet still, we will not go out and hurt anyone. Mm -hmm. We were nonviolent. Mm -hmm. We were loving. We were caring, and we were trying to show mm -hmm. the people that love is better than mm -hmm. hate. Mm -hmm. 
And, and of course, uh, as we near this uh, first end of this first segment, uh, would the uh, quote that was made quite a while ago is that uh, before I'd be a slave, I'd be willing to go bury, in my grave, bury my grave, bury my grave. And, and so that, yeah. that, well, that was a prime motive that's, that's in right. terms of the way uh -huh. many of you felt that right. uh, nothing was worse no. than the situation that you found yourselves in. Right. That and when plus we, we were not going to hurt anybody. Uh -huh. And you were nonviolent. You we were, were non not there to try to kill folks, but only to demand the rights that you felt that you ought right. to have. Okay, and of course, uh, we're making preparations for the uh, first commercial break, and then after which uh, Leo uh, Kwame is going to give us some information relative to an organization that played a significant role in this. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Talking to Kwame Leo Lillard.